Good, beautiful late afternoon, everyone. We're coming to you from the San Antonio slash Elmo. Elmo. <laughs> you can tell it's been a long day. Alamo, KOA, and I've never seen a squirrel like that in my life. Sorry, a squirrel just caught my attention and it's not any like we have in the East. Anyway, we're here for a cabin stay for two nights. We're gonna show you around the KOA and the cabin. You guys know what to do. Grab yourself a tasty treat and a beverage of choice and keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside this vlog at all times. And let me like not get distracted. I sound like Doug, squirrel. <laughs> all right, let's go inside and take a look. Before we get into the full tour, let's take a moment to look at the map, discuss some specifics and all of that. So here is the map that you get at check-in. I had to move Lucy so I could get a better angle. So you enter. And one of the things that I do like about this KOA, and I'll show you this like in person more, is it is gated. They do have people during the daytime manning it to stop you and ask you, you know, if you're a registered guest or checking in or whatever. And then at night it is closed and you do have a gate code to use to get in. That was one thing I liked. And also another thing I like is there is a city bus stop right across the road. So if you want to use public transportation to go downtown, that's a good thing as well. So do want to notate, they're very specific for check-in here. Uh, tent sites, RV sites, I think are at one. Cabins though is 4 p.m. And do not try to check in earlier than 4 p.m. They will turn you away or make you sit out by the office and wait. So there are a lot of sites here of various types, as you can see. We are in the cabin section up here. They do have the one bedroom primitive, the two bedroom primitive, and then the deluxe cabins. Then there's also a few tent sites up here in this circle. And again, I'll be walking you around the property to show you more of this in detail. And then all these other ones are your various RV sites. They do have the typical Camp K9, AKA dog park. There is a fishing pond here that's catch and release. There's a pool at the office store. Uh, there is an event hall too, and they will send you texts to your phone various times throughout the day telling you like last night at 5.30 there was bingo, um, this or that. Also, you can go grab yourself some breakfast and you can um, see the Q code. I'll show you the Q code in a minute to look up the menu for breakfast online and you can go grab that, pay for it, bring it back to your site. And then at night you could call the office and order like the Hunt Brothers pizza to be delivered to your site. Uh, there are two bathhouses. There's one on the back side of the office as well as one up here that's closer to us for, you know, tent sites and cabins. Also, one thing I wanted to point out with this KOA is there is a greenway right next to the property. So if you're one that really wants to put in some heavy walking steps, jogging, riding your bike, walking your pet, there is this Greenway City Hike and Bike Trail that is accessible. As you can see, there's a trail access up here near where we are in the cabins. There's also trail access down here closer to the front of the property. I think that's all the basic specifics that I wanted to point out utilizing the map. Hold on, I'll find you the information on the breakfast. As you can see, when you check in, you will get this in your brochure that has the QR reader for the cafe menu, as well as the TV listing. There are no TVs in these primitive cabins, but if you're an RV person and you hook up your own TV, then that will give you what the cable is that's offered here. And then there's other like advertisements for local stuff around in case those are any needs that you have here. This way, this way. There's also a map here that shows you kind of where you are in the San Antonio area. So as you can see, so what we're discovering is we're a little bit away, like we came specifically to do Six Flags today 
and we're a little bit far away for that. So I think in the future when we're doing Six Flags or SeaWorld, we might actually stay closer to there. But here is really convenient if you wanted to see like the place where the Spurs play or go to the historic downtown or something. We have a two room cabin. If you've watched any of our other KOA videos, like in Florida, you've seen us at a two room cabin before. This one has the big bed in the front. I like that it has this little shelf next to it. Plus I like that it has two windows. That lets in a lot of nice ambient light. Mark is sitting out on the porch right now with Lucy while I do this. So I can get some good pictures. There's a mini fridge, that's good to see. Uh, and another window over here. So yeah, a lot of uh, nice natural light can come in this front room. And I like there's another good useful table there. You could uh, put some paper towels hanging on that, a nice little shelf, nice little coat hangers. Ah, oh, this is nice, um, smells and looks squeaky clean. Nice, good quality door on that. This is kind of more of a nice, like upgraded style. It has kind of that same style and some features as you've seen us in before in the two room cabins, but yet it does seem newer, more modern and very well taken care of. I love that little cabin welcome sign. That is cute. I also have some more hooks here, which is good for hanging just, you know, sweatshirt, backpack, your hat, whatever. I'm going to take you in the back room. There is a door that separates the two rooms. Nice windows back here, too, and some artwork. And then in this room, you have two bunk beds. But this seems much, this cabin seems wider than some of the ones I've stayed in in Florida. I don't know, maybe it's just my head playing games with me right now, but it seems very wide. The bunks don't seem right on top of each other. Like there's still a lot of floor space here. Floor's in really good shape. Air conditioning. And there is a nice window here too. Although it does, you know, not offer a lot of privacy. This is a really popular area. Sites are gonna be right on top of each other. Not a lot of privacy, but does seem like it's a really nice KOA. Before we could check in, uh, Mark took Teddy to the playground and I'll get a little bit of that later. But they are, I do need to tell you, for cabins, they are really strict. They do stick to that four o'clock p.m. check-in time. Do not come before. We actually showed up about three o'clock and no, they, they turned us away. They would not check us in. Mirror, hi, so you can see how you look. So there, just, I really am impressed with the cabin though. I haven't turned on this light yet. But as you can see, there's lights in both rooms. Well, hello there. Do I know anybody that wants to do his turn for his channel? Yeah, let's uh, come on Tuesday Let's go get the Tuesday train things. Okay. Walking back from the bathhouse. Uh, bathrooms were clean. There's like two toilet stalls, two shower stalls that I saw in the women's room. I was actually gonna do a quick clip in there for you, but somebody came in right when I was gonna film, so I wasn't able to do that. But I wanna show you the cabin section here. It's cute, because like some of those cabins, you don't park right in front, you park here, and then obviously just walk in just a short ways to your cabin. That flowering bush is really beautiful. And then there's more over here. And I'll show you around more over the next couple of days. But right now, there's like we're the only ones that have arrived here at a cabin. So, really easy to get some clear shots of everything. I'm trying to remember to take some still pictures too as I look around. There's tent sites way over there. They look like, you know, the nicer tent sites that you have at some of the KOAs with like a little cooking shelf, you know, electricity, nice tent pads. And again, I'll walk over there either later tonight or tomorrow. I like how some of these cabins are a little bit like raised. 
interesting. They're mowing. The fresh cut grass smells phenomenal. It's funny, that one doesn't have a porch swing and it's like a different color than all the others. And I don't know why, because I don't believe it's an ADA one because it has steps up into it. I wonder if it's just had to have been replaced or something. It's interesting to me why it's such a different color paint yet has a different patio too. Huh, interesting. There are a whole bunch more to my left here that are similar to our style that are either the one bedroom or the two bedroom. And then beyond ours, beyond our car, you see they do have also some of the deluxe ones that have the bathroom inside. And since we've been in a hotel the previous four nights, it's so hard to go back to having to walk outside to go to the bathroom, I'll be honest. I typically don't mind it. I really typically am not opposed to that. But uh, we've been actually hoteling it last five nights, excuse me, last five nights coming across. And when you've been traveling many states in a row, all of a sudden you realize, oh, I'm tired. But these deluxe cabins do look beautiful. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer on this one show you so that is one of the styles that actually has like a bathroom and, and kitchen inside it mark was super sweet and went and got whataburger for us we have a few few snacks on hand and i debated doing um pizza delivery this is one of those koas that does do uh pizza delivery but i can't eat it and uh, teddy wasn't really in the mood for it tonight so really sweet but it's now really nice with the sun over the other side so our picnic table's in the shade and mark like came back and he suggested we eat at the picnic table and i was like oh that's a great idea with the sun on the other side of that roof and stuff and over the trees it's really nice out here now isn't it <laughs> teddy's gonna come out in a minute he had to finish the game he was working on i got a chicken sandwich lighting on that's really weird right now and we actually had reward points that popped up for like a special reward for like these next couple weeks of a free burger. Teddy has some fries, Mark has some onion rings and a drink, and I'm going to have my chicken sandwich. But I'm glad you suggested this, honey. This is actually with the sun. It might get hot again here in a few minutes. As you can see, it will eventually kind of have a dip between those two trees there. But right now, this is gorgeous. Early morning time on the porch. It's funny. I had called my mom inside because I call my mom back home in Maine every morning and uh, Lucy's like, no, we do that out on the porch so I can listen to birds while you talk to grandma. So here is my view as the sun will start coming up soon. The birds are chirping. You can hear traffic from the highway off in the distance. So it's not like super quiet here, but not right like super loud or anything either. I mean, you still can enjoy the bird sounds. If I had my own coffee fixings, I would certainly be enjoying, I mean, that's a nice picnic table that I could set my jet boil out on and make coffee. I just, we don't really have a lot of our own stuff with this particular road trip we've been doing. But still enjoying morning on the porch, huh, Lucy? There is some sort of gang of geese, herd of geese that landed. Because there's a greenway over there yonder. And actually, you can walk and bike on it. It goes for quite a few miles. It looks beautiful. But I take it there's also maybe a little, like, brook or stream or something. And I don't know what the geese are that are honking like crazy. They're starting to walk now across the yard. I don't think you can see them. They're like walking out behind that other person's car. But Lucy is just like, what are those? Oh, now we're getting bored and yawning. Mm -hmm. For a while though, she was just all alert. Like, what are those? But they've been cackling now for like 15 minutes. A lot of times we would prefer to have, like I had mentioned, our own coffee maker, our own food and stuff, but 
This was a lengthy cross country trip with a very tiny car, two adults, a dog, and a child. <laughs> so instead, I have my own personal Uber Eats driver. So this morning, we're having grabs from Starbucks. See if the boy wants his cake pop, huh? Yeah. So I showed you the map, I showed you the room tour, kind of showed you what we were doing early this morning, Lucy and I. Mark and Teddy have gone off to Six Flags for the day, Six Flags Fiesta. Uh, Lucy and I are just having a nice day at the KOA. She wanted to go for a walk. And uh, normally I can film okay when I'm walking her, but there are a lot of squirrels here. And if you haven't followed us for very long, or if you're just finding this video randomly, our previous home that we just moved away from was Everglades National Park, which doesn't have squirrels because the pythons have eaten small and large mammals. So walking her is an interesting experience right now with all these squirrels. She could care less that like all these crows are here or grackles, I guess they are. Now that I look at them, they're grackles. She could care less about other dogs, but man, these squirrels. She is fierce on them. As a matter of fact, I think she was just taking a nap and dreaming about the squirrels, which had her decide we had to go for a walk, which is okay. Temperature's beautiful right now, and I don't mind getting some steps in. So there is, you know, a good amount of area to walk with her around here. It's really exciting. There's like a nice grassy area here. There's even some poop bags in case you forgot your own. I typically walk around with mine in my pocket anyway. But we're gonna stroll around, come down here by some of the tent sites. Take a few sniffs as we go, I imagine. But yeah, my goal is kinda, we'll head down here by the tent sites, maybe go over by the Greenway, showing you back here at the primitive cabins and the deluxe cabins, more RV sites. But between today and tomorrow morning, I'll get to it all. It's a little breezy too, so hopefully that's not coming in the mic too bad as we walk. I'm looking around at the tent sites and they're labeled tent by like T such and such, T70. Some of them have like these little cover it places where you could set your camp stove or whatever and even have electric. Although I guess a lot of them have electric even if they don't have the little covered cooking table. So I'll show you a couple different ones. Um, even looks like, like if you were conversion van even, and probably would be allowed to stay on this site, this type of site, nice level driveway. You'd probably have your tent, I'm assuming over like in the grassy area, but it's rather flat. You know, as far as tent sites go, it's a really nice tent site. It really is. I mean, I've seen some in places, not KOAs, but as you know, sometimes state parks or wherever you're on a hill. So that's nice, level, spacious, really. Nice space. These are also tent sites on this back row as well, like this T20. That is a huge tent site. So if you had, you know, a couple of big, like those big cabin type style tents, something like this, you could fit nicely on. Again, there's no like of that structure that you could put like your camp stove on or something, but nice picnic table, nice fire ring, still has water, electric, all of that. Really is nice. And you do have a lot of, one thing I'm liking about this is there's a lot of trash cans around at least like this loop. And what they say on the brochure is you can deposit your trash. They want it to be obviously just how your normal household daily trash, no like big items or anything into these or at around 10 o'clock in the morning, if you leave it at like the end of your driveway, they will come by and collect it. That's looking back where I came from. Just kind of slowly showing you. And I wanted to give you a closer look at one of these, like this T6 here that has one of these tables. And I've seen this at other KOAs. I've even seen it at various state parks and stuff around the country before. It really does give a nice little area if you had a small cook stove, like a Coleman or something, or even one of the jet boil stoves. 
that you needed a nice flat place and you wanted it separate from your picnic table. Or if in, if you had, sometimes you bring a small little electric tea kettle. Oh, look at the little caterpillar. Hi, dude. So say you had even something electric, you could plug it in right there. There is a nice electrical outlet. And again, nice fire pit. You do have water as well. A nice parking spot. And from what I see, the maintenance here and the grounds crew, I see them constantly out taking care of things, picking up things. It seems like this place is really, really well maintained. Kind of stepping back to give you a little bit more of a look. And as you can see, this one does have a designated tent pad beyond the picnic table that is not grassy. So that's something to consider if you don't want to be on grass with your equipment. Consider contacting them to see, you know, which ones have the pads and which ones are grass. As Lucy and I walk along, giving you another look here at another tent site, T5. Nice, huge tent pad. Picnic table, the little cooking stand there, fire pit, which is nice because these have fire pits and the cabins do not. So at least not the uh, primitive ones. I didn't really look to see if the deluxe ones did or not. So that's nice. Although like a lot of places are under a fire burn right now. Ban, I mean, <laughs> not fire ban, not burn. Lucy stopped to go potty and I turned around and she had her attention on something else and there's a turtle crossing right over here. Super cute, my first Texas turtle. There, I got her to sit with the leave it command and the wait command and now I'm trying to get a little bit of a closer look before it goes through the fence. You've never quite mastered multitasking until you've tried to have your dog obey commands, still hold a poop bag full of poop, and film, especially wildlife, up close, <laughs> managing it all at the same time. All right, we did. And the good thing is, too, with all these trash cans, it's easy to deposit of your poop bag rather immediately instead of walking all around the whole park with it. So one last look at these tent sites and then we're gonna move on and go find maybe down here by the Greenway. See a few more. Oh, here's one of the Wi-Fi towers. I have found the Wi-Fi to be eh, um, better than some KOAs I've been to, not as good as others. So maybe falling in the average range Usually, like many times, when it's peak times that guests are here, like evenings or morning before checkout, it slows down a lot. Whereas sometimes, maybe in the middle of the afternoon, you might get it going a little more. Uh, it's good for checking websites and stuff. Not so good for streaming or like uh, uploading to YouTube or anything like that. But, you know, like I said, it falls in the average range. Not as good as some and better than others. Here is one of the entrances to the Greenway. Easy open and close, but I wanted to show you a little bit before I open and step out into it. This is the Wreck Trail, which obviously is not part of the KOA. This is part of the city of San Antonio. So do be mindful of that and respectful for any rules, regulations, or policies that you'd have to abide to on this. It looks like, like down here a little ways, there's even mileage markers. I was told yesterday at check-in in this direction like down about three miles, I guess there is some construction. Normally, I think you could go like seven miles or so, but right now it is limited to only about three or so, I think, due to some construction. Showing you some of the signage from this direction. So just letting you know when you go through this little part right here, you know, you are also 
along the KOA, so just be respectful if you're not a KOA registered guest. You're not supposed to enter the property. And then this is City of San Antonio. So just giving you a little bit of a look of what it looks like. I'm not sure we're gonna do much of that today. I think I might walk maybe a little bit and come up through the front of the property. That's back at the tent section. Then you see the cabin section. And then the whole rest of it is RV and stuff to the front. So we'll walk along. She seems to be doing okay. So not nearly as hot as where we came from in Everglades. So this is not bad for her at all to be out walking, getting some good steps in and good sniffs. We haven't lived out west for like four years or so, so I'm really liking seeing some different flowers, different stuff just that I don't normally see. Can't really see it through this spot at least, but there is like a little waterway, a little creek, whatever, on the other side of that. But like I said, you, you know it's down in there, but you can't really see it really well. Better look at it now. And the waterway you're hearing, I mean the waterway, the roadway you might be hearing in the distance is I-10. You are really close to I-10 here. Also wanted to notate that there is fishing allowed in that creek with a license. So a license under Texas, fishing license under Texas. Whereas the pond up here somewhere at the KOA is just catch and release. Ready? You're enjoying this, aren't you? She's loving this. <laughs> Trying to film the sign and Lucy wanted to sit right in front of it. So this is interesting. They have like a little notation for a flood exit what um, post you're at, the 911 locator, in case you had to call 911 for an emergency. That's really cool. I like it when city trails use stuff like that for safety purposes. So this is what you're looking at for the Greenway system, if you ever wanted to look it up. We're gonna enter back into the KOA. So there are, just to repeat, there's two entrances slash exits from the KOA property to the Greenway. You can make a nice little loop if you're into jogging, biking, rollerblading, walking your fur baby. And then we'll uh, head up by the office, I think. And then maybe by Camp K9, and then we'll be able to wrap this up. Little side note while Lucy sniffs. In these tours, I don't give you a lot of information about the various RV spots because in all honesty, we've never owned an RV. It is in our future plans within a year or two, maybe eventually, just because Mark can't do a lot of tent camping and stuff. But for now, I apologize. I know really no difference in the various RV spots. I cannot really assist with that yet. I can just kind of show you where they are. This is the back side of the office slash camp store slash pool. Oops, I got to step out of the way. There's a truck coming. Oh, they're not coming in this direction. I'm not going to take you over by the pool right now because there's a lot of people hanging out by it. There are restrooms and stuff by the pool. I think showers in there as well. And of course, where you can rent stuff like bikes, the pedal carts, also buy firewood, ice, there's a camp store, all of that. I gotta come get this cute guy. He must be out for Fiesta. Again, I don't know a lot about RVs, but I can tell you a lot of RV people want a good spot for check-in to pull in with their rig, and they really do have that here. They have some good lanes to line you up and allow for check-in and the check-in process. So that's a good thing. Really windy right now, but I wanted to show you guys their KOA sign. I love it. But also happening right now in San Antonio is Fiesta. It's an annual array of festivities. And I don't know a lot about it, so I'm not going to speak a lot on it. I'm sure in the next year of living here in Texas, we'll learn a lot about it. But I love this little guy. But when the wind just blew and he popped over, it scared Lucy so much. It was funny. Looking back at the entrance, check in the office, the pool area. 
there's more RV sites. Camp K9 is actually over in that direction. I'm not gonna walk over there today because Lucy's getting ready for a drink of water and a snack and a break, I think. So I'm gonna cut up through here. Here is that rec hall I was showing you on the map where they do various activities and then I'll show you the cafe that's out behind and then the playground. Teddy rated the playground very high. Let's go look. Half court basketball, nice grassy area. There's nice chairs here to just lounge and relax. There's some cornhole. And then I'll show you the playground that Teddy rated quite heavily. Teddy used this yesterday before we could check in because we were a little early. And yeah, he loved it. He gave it like a Teddy typical when he says something out of 10 and he shoots a high number above 10 that means he really likes it i think he said this was like a 60 out of 10 he was so excited about it here is the patio cafe which is where you can come buy some breakfast and coffee and all that if you don't have your own fixings in the morning and you can use that um q code there that i showed you in the beginning when i was showing you the park map brochure and they have a little community fire pit here it's operated by push button so it's gas run so that's nice if you just want to come up and enjoy a fire for a bit. I might have to bring Teddy up here tonight and show him that. He will love that. I'm leaving the main area. I'm just going to walk up through the RV area to go back to our cabin. But it is getting windy, so. She's so good. Campground, hotel, whatever it is. When I say door, she knows it's time to go back. And a lot of times when there's not a lot of sniffs, she leads me directly to it. She's a little bit better in hotels than she is uh, cabins. Too many sniffs out here to enjoy. But she, for the most part, has led me back to the right direction. Uh, I know there's lots of stuff, huh? And here we are, back in our cabin. Well, Lucy and I have just been lounging out here on the porch. It's remained a really gorgeous day. For me because sometimes I like days that are overcast, breezy, so it's not cold, it's not hot, it's not buggy, it's not raining. So really can't ask for much more when you just want a lounge day to just kind of hang out. So I think I've covered this pretty good. I mean we're not going to use the pool this day, not going to use the laundry room facilities. And probably I won't make it over to Camp K9 either. So those are really only the big areas that I didn't really get good in this video. So what are our final thoughts? And I really think it's prettier to look at Lucy than me currently. Although I don't know how she got her leash wrapped around her belly. I think when she got up to go get a bite of kibble, she came back and did that. She doesn't really pull. So it's okay to have her loop to the deck like that because you have to technically... When you have your pets here, keep them on a tether. Um, so I have to keep her on a tether to follow the policy, but she's not the type that will just jump up and like try to run. So it's not gonna pull on that railing. It just kind of is, you know, she knows she's tethered and she's just gonna lay there anyway. So no, that, that would never hurt the railing the way, the way she is. She's not one to jump up and yank. Anyway, final thoughts. Uh, we paid a little over a hundred dollars a night for this cabin and then the pet fee is ten dollars a night with that said we have some mixed feelings about this uh, it is a beautiful KOA absolutely a gorgeous well kept up well maintained the grounds are very clean, the cabin was very clean, the restrooms are kept very clean. Uh, they're constantly riding around, making sure that there's no trash anywhere, you know, that nobody's doing anything wrong. Safety is top notch here. So those are all huge pluses. Uh, Wi-Fi, not the greatest. Um, so with, with that said, I do think Think, what was it like it was a little over a hundred a night so I'm just gonna put out a rough guess that it was like a hundred and fifteen a night maybe for this I think that's a little high typically for what we're willing to pay for these more primitive cabins at a KOA so I don't know 
if we would always choose here when we start coming back to San Antonio because we're going to be living in Texas now and we will come to San Antonio for fun for weekends marks long weekends once in a while with that said though we might if we were doing certain activities it is really close to like the historic downtown and the missions and stuff it is really close to the arena where the spurs play so if there was other things in that arena where the spurs play like wrestling or something we might consider staying here otherwise to be honest there's a few hotel they're gonna start weed whacking so if you hear that sound that's what that is oh leaf blowing they're leaf blowing Otherwise, if we are actually to come back to do SeaWorld or Six Flags, I have to be honest, I'd probably, for around the same price range or a little bit more, choose to hotel it. So I have mixed emotions. It's a great KOA. I think they're a little fussy on their check-in time. It wasn't like I was trying to check in at noon or anything. I think 3 p.m. check-in time for cabins would be a little bit more appropriate than a 4 p.m. Um... Other than, other than that, I don't really have a lot of negatives. Let's put it that way. It is a gorgeous KOA. There's way more positive vibes I have here than negatives. Just don't know if at that price range we would always choose to do it um, instead of just a, a hotel room that would offer, you know, bathroom in the room, TV, better Wi-Fi, comfortable bed. But you never know stay tuned. You never know where you're going to find us. And with that, I am going to close it out. Peace and love, gang. Keep adventuring. And hey, what's next? You never do know where you'll find us next or what we'll be doing.